Hello, my name is James Codling and this is Marja Hatta. Luton, a large town located 30 miles north of London. The home of one of the country's biggest airports, London Luton. Also home to the Vauxhall industry, but most importantly, the hat industry. In the late 1600s, people have made straw hats in the Luton area. In 1800, Luton was a small market town. The main reason for this was the change in the hat industry. That's why today we are here in Luton, to find out why they are called the Hatters. Yeah, we called the Hatters because we had a hat factory many years ago and many of our families used to work in there. Right, that Luton was very, there's a lot of places, you know, that, um, that makes hats. It's the main form of um, employment for many years and um, with, with the straw hat and the boater, um, hence why you get that a lot of the time at Luton Town Football Club. It's one of the, um, you know, like one of the most thriving industry. I think it's important really right that we have a sense of, um, how can I say it really, a sense of heritage you know, and um, fashion, you know, and stuff like that. We turned a hat factory now into a cafe where you can have a cup of tea and a coffee. We're at the Wardown Museum to find out about the hat industry in Luton. Short hat making was well established in this area by the 1680s. It did not become very important to Luton until much later. The industry expanded to the French Napoleonic Wars, which ended in 1815. No one town dominated the trade. Luton took the lead in the years 1820 to 1840. Most of the workers in the Luton hat industry were women. Some of them earned high wages at busy times. The women were known to be lively, independent and well dressed. There was plenty of land for sale in the town at the time. Building development was not controlled. The hat industry connects Luton to other countries in Europe and beyond. The hats made in Luton are exported all over the world. Hello, we're at Walter White Hat Factory Luton. We're here to talk to a man called Philip who makes hats. Are you as mad as a hatter? So let's go and meet a mad hatter. Hello, my name is Philip Ian Wright. Um, I'm 53. Scary. And I make hats, this is what I do. So, how did you get into the hat industry? How did I get into the industry? I was invited to come and learn the value of my pocket money as a kid. So, from an early age, I was taught how to make hats. Not all of it I enjoyed. Years later, though, uh, I discovered I really did get a huge amount of fulfilment making hats. And so, after a bike accident, just pure fluke, I came into the industry like that. Uh, what type of hats do you make here? We make, at this place, uh, we have a sort of like a rule. If you can put it on your head, uh, and we can make it, we'll do it. What do you see in the future of the hat industry? As long as there are people out there who want to be different, then we can help them by making them hats. But hey, we're still here. We've got no plan on going anywhere. After speaking to Philip, he gave us a tour to show us the regular inside day work of his hat factory and to show us how hats used to and still are made in Luton today. Small family-run firms made most of the hats in Luton. Some big London hat makers set up branches in the town. They wanted to be nearer the source of their raw material, straw plat. They also bought hats from the small makers. Luton's hat industry supported a number of industries in the town. The most important were block making and bleaching and dyeing. Straw plate was the raw material of the Luton hat industry. The plate was made in the villages and sold at the special plate markets. Most of the platers were women and children. So in this documentary we visited the Wardam Museum and the Philip Wright Hat Factory. If anything, they prove that even though the hat industry has died down, it will live on. One last question, are you as mad as a hatter? <laughs> <laughs>